Looks like this whole little city is Colombia. I keep seeing different. Different signages and stuff. You can hear your thoughts. Yeah, you can. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he has a Columbia book bag. So, yeah, we're in the right spot. Screams athlete. Here's the bookstore. I'm going to come back tomorrow after and buy some things when I get out of my callback weekend. Look at how pretty it is. All my life, I never knew I wanted to go to Columbia. And then there was today. There's this alma mater statue. Have you guys heard of it? The alma mater statue? Oh, the fans. Yeah. oh. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Have you guys? Oh my gosh. Oh, there it is. The alma mater statue was the woman chilling on that big ass library steps. Yeah, just sneak in. <laughs> Look at all these rich ass kids. It looks like one of those like college pamphlets where they're just like, oh, yeah. Come over here, we're so diverse. Exactly. We play spike ball on the lawn. Oh, for real. Next to the other building. The other building. Like, you know, you I'm know, like, the, uh, the brown brick building. I'm like, which one? Next to the other building. We've got drunk yeah. Santa over here. Little cup next to Space Force in New York. My first time. Look at the alma mater. It is. It is big for New York. This is nice. <laughs> he said, "I don't want to even think." Guys, this is the school. This is the studio. Everyone wants to know why it looks like this. <laughs> since I was six years old and there's nothing I can't do. You want me to do the soft shoe? I'll do it. And I'll do it so good. It'll embarrass you. Good morning, guys. I am running to catch my bus. I did not oversleep. I just was tired as hell. Damn it. <laughs> Literally running. Luckily, I know where the stop is. Y'all, it's across the street a little bit. So, I'm just gonna walk that way. Good morning. Today's the day. Everything has added up to this moment in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all know that TikTok sound that's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's like how I've been feeling all morning. All right. It's always good when you see someone at your bus stop. Like, okay, <laughs> we ain't all missing together. <laughs> Maybe, but I don't think we did. lot of people today. This is Monday morning in New York. 
It will be 100 degrees down the street. We're going to take you down to 242nd Street back quarter park. Please wait at the platform for the next arrival train making all stops. Next stop will be the last stop. Next to the last stop, 137. Hey y'all, say what's up to the John. What's up? How y'all doing? Hey, we bring how to get into drama school together and we both made it to Columbia, so yeah. Alright, we're gonna see how today goes. The blurry. How you feeling today? I'm feeling nervous and excited and anxious and all of them things. So I'm just gonna use all of it. Hey, period. See how it goes. Me too, y'all. Same Sorry. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Group three. Yeah. Ooh. I said yell at me too. Yeah. Crazy. Lunch time. Lunch. Yay. <laughs> Who's sitting here? Brooklyn. Brooklyn said we have to touch it for good luck. And preferably I would like to touch her book because that is where the intelligent things lay. But it's far, baby, and I'm not that tall. I have said I would touch her book. Can I touch right here? Yeah, you can touch. They just don't want anybody to climb up to We won't. He's guarding the alma mater. Okay, are you tall enough? Mm. There's the wisdom. You touch the right with this tuition. The buildings are gone. They're so cute. This is like what I think women in office. Asian women, they'd be okay with her. But we, dang, that view is so cool from back here. I wish we had Trevor here with his camera. Oh, yeah. I think he got a lead with that. All my friends and family is like, it was like, you can see his great guy. We want you to go to Columbia because you can talk. Look. What, the yeah. Shakespeare? I've seen it. Yeah. Let me see. This book is thick as fuck. Is it? Somebody told me Damn. Scott was like the big Shakespeare person in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so funny because like, this is theater. Like, we're trying to get close. It's so funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, don't. they don't. I ran mine down. I can't decide. I wish this was blue. It is pretty on this side. Ah. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's fine. It's so friendly. Hi. 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's sorry. Come, let's see. Come. We gotta catch up to the tour group. So I'm trying to get into the gym. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. I'm a theater kid, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll show you, like, kind of like the workout area first. Thank you. Um, yeah, so. Out. Alumni. So we have like the indoor track, and then we have the yeah the uh, blue gym where this is like where like intramural like, and then we have the trial. Thank you. Yeah, this is like the main basketball area right now. 
the food juicer up. Oh. So right now it's technically team practice. Um, so these are just like bleachers and stuff. The breakfast down there. Um, so they're like open recreation hours. So. What's up, y'all? Whether you're one of my regular subscribers or if you're here because you want to learn about Columbia or you're just trying to get into any grad school, thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed my vlog. It was so much fun to go to New York and look at the campus. Columbia is absolutely beautiful, okay? If this is your first time, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Regardless of where this journey goes, baby, I am an actress and you will see a lot of film, television, acting, background, main role, commercial, creative, sewing, anything that has to do with arts on my channel. So if you're into that, please subscribe. Now, I had to make sure that I came here and talked to you guys a little bit about my callback weekend because I think the vlog is fun and all, but there's so much that you need to know, okay? So I've split it up a little bit with how the date went. So first off, the day started at 9 a.m. I picked Monday, you get two days that you get to choose from. Um, they choose randomly, but because I did have some other schools that were looking at me, I just wanted to be safe and go with Monday. So that's exactly what I did. Now it started at 9 a.m. and I got out of there at about 11.30. So if you're thinking it is a full callback weekend, Get that out of your mind. Yes, it's callbacks and yes, it lasts a weekend, but it's really just a quick callback. You go in, you audition, you interview, you're done, okay? The weekend part is more so for the panel, the faculty, the students. They're doing this all weekend, not you. So when we got there, I saw everyone that I was in a group with and luckily I was there with some friends. So that was pretty cool to be able to meet them in person after we'd been Zooming for literally six, seven months. It was really cool to see them in person. So before we knew it, we were doing a warm up voice and body with Liz Hayes, which was very fun. I loved her energy. She was super cool. Um, she did something unique where she looked at everyone and she gave everyone their own individual hello, which was like nice i felt seen i was like good morning liz what's up we got the same last name <laughs> uh, but that was pretty cool directly after the warm-up we met we went immediately into auditions um and that looked the same as the first auditions there was someone on deck and there was someone auditioning so i think i was maybe like the fourth or fifth person um, and in my waiting time, I just practiced getting into my body. My Romeo and Juliet starts on the floor. I went and looked over some of the videos that I had recorded from my online classes when I was doing Zoom practices with coaches. I just went over, looked at my notes, looked at my direction, a little bit of the body movements and my beats. And, um, I looked over that and then I went into the audition room. I was extremely nervous going into the audition room. The first time I auditioned for Columbia, I wasn't that nervous because at the time they were my number two. At this point, they were my number one. So I was very nervous, okay? And I think that's okay to be nervous. I just took a deep breath, got on the ground and did the thing. And I felt pretty confident when I was walking out. Um, the interview was okay. They didn't have any questions for me, which kind of threw me because I was prepared to answer questions and really tell them about myself. So when they were just immediately like, do you have any questions for us? Um, that kind of threw me. I had literally spent hours on the phone, reaching out to people on social media, getting in contact with current students. So at that point, I didn't have any questions about the program because everything had been thoroughly answered and I was very excited to be there. Um, I did just ask them two questions that like were on my mind that I could think of but in the moment guys I was so freaking nervous so like if you're like me and you do bad um under the pressure of interviews one thing I wish that I had done was wrote down some questions and just stuck it in my pocket on a piece of paper so that I could be like okay give me one second I actually do have questions so if I were to ever do that over again I know myself I would 100% be prepared with a little slip note of questions um but they asked me if NYU was so interested in me and how Yale and Juilliard went. And I was like, yo, like, it didn't go well. And I wish that I had took that opportunity to tell them how much Columbia means to me and why I'm happy that Columbia actually is the only school that I was continuing this journey in. Um, but I froze up and I was just like, no, like, there's schools that are interested in me in LA, which is true. There is one school that is interested in me, but, you know, it's supposed to be mutual, so... 
yeah, I don't think I'm going to be going to that school <laughs> respectfully. But um, I think, and then the only other question that was asked other than, do you have any other schools interested in you is, do you owe debt to your undergrad school? Which I do. Who doesn't? <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I owe debt, but I have a few plans on how to pay for grad school, so like, don't worry about that. I will come up with the money. Um, so that was pretty much my interview, and I just walked out, and that was it. Once we left the interview, you were free to go home. I decided to stay because they had lunch in like an hour, so I just chit chatted and talked to some of the other people. It was really cool to talk to the people because they were literally from everywhere. San Antonio, Virginia, Georgia, Maine. It was so many people from so many different places, um, and it was just amazing to see how everyone got there inside of that room um, and how everyone's process went, and it was just very interesting. There were a lot of myths that were debunked, which I'm going to get into next, but after I left, um, for lunch because immediately after lunch there was a second group coming in this was group four they had done two groups per day for two days so I was group three and group four had come in directly after lunch and they ate lunch before their audition um so that was the afternoon group and I just kind of got out of their way because Liz started warming up with them too and I didn't want to be in their space and it just felt very like you know take the hint hit the road jack so me and my friends left and you can see that in the vlog we went to explore the campus i actually called ahead or went ahead online and scheduled a tour for the undergraduate campus just so that i can see the facility um they didn't let us into the butler library and i actually immediately broke away from the tour because they were talking for so long and um i wanted to get inside of the gym which you can see that's like something that's very much of interest for me if i do go to Columbia Columbia or whatever grad school I want access to a gym so I can stay healthy keep my body fit you know mm. so we did the tour um we went to the bookstore I bought a t-shirt which I will be wearing if I get accepted y'all gonna see me do some really cool stuff artistic hello I already got plans on how I'm gonna reveal um if I get accepted in and the bookstore was fun it was just absolutely beautiful I honestly think Columbia's campus is breathtaking I never knew that I wanted to go to Columbia until I saw their campus I fell in love I was like wow this is what it's like to go to an ivy um but the campus was nice and actually guys while I was on campus I actually found out that I was in Vogue magazine Vogue magazine the Vogue magazine I was just there looking at the alma mater and everything and then my photographer creative director hit me up and was like yo autumn you're in vogue so that was something that was really really awesome as you can see with this picture here it was just such an amazing moment that i had um while i was actually in my callback weekend so with that said tons of memories were made this weekend okay tons of memories that will never be taken away were made so after just exploring the campus the excitement of everything seeing the city we went back to the school for an optional and i use parentheses because you know you're gonna think that if they tell you to show up it's mandatory whether they say it's optional or not but the faculty members actually were not in sight they weren't there they did come back just to thank us for auditioning for them and giving them a gift of our talent but they didn't really interact with us or speak with us or anything. So if you don't make it back, don't think that it's the end of the world and that they will not like you or choose you. Um, so I did go to the optional student panel and it was pretty nice. I was able to meet a couple people in person that I knew from online, like three people. It was so exciting. Um, asked them questions about hi housing, their experience, the cohort, the program. Um, and just, you know, small talk, big talk, happy talk. It was just really cool to see how the program changed them and things that they didn't expect to change within themselves. So that was really cool. I enjoyed the student panel. 10 out of 10 would highly recommend that you make it there. But honestly, callback weekends were a piece of, I don't want to say it was a piece of cake, but, um, it was quick. It was fast. It was easy. It wasn't like a day of classes like I expected. Um, it was just literally on audition. So come ready. Bring the heat. Okay? This is your moment. Like I'm an essay. You only get one shot. Do not miss a chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. I did want to touch on one thing, y'all. If you get invited to Callback Weekend, make sure that you read the email and that you're doing what they asked. I don't know. 
why I decided not to listen. But the email says to bring the piece that you did for your original audition that they selected and then bring a new piece. I decided not to do the piece that they had already selected and to just bring two new pieces. And I think that if I could go back and do anything over again, it would be 100% to bring the piece that they enjoyed just to make sure that they saw in me the second time what they saw in me the first time. And I probably would have come prepared for the interview with questions and knowing things that I wanted them to know about me. Because I think I left that room without them really seeing the burning fire that's within me and how much I want this and why I feel like I'm a good fit or what, you know, what I feel like I could bring to the program. Um, I just don't feel like I left them with a lot. Because I was expecting for them to dig for it and they did not dig for it. Honey, they're not working for it. You have to work for it. So read that email. Do what they ask. Take the adjustments. Listen and come prepared. Once you get into the callback weekends, don't act like you have it, okay? Keep practicing just as much as you did to get there and you will be perfectly fine, okay? You will make it back into the school. I'm just talking, I'm, I'm mainly talking to myself because I need to hear that I'm going to get in, even though I did too. Y'all, I've been a rule breaker my whole life, honestly, and it wasn't even intentional. I think that I read the email and then I argued with myself back and forth over what I should show them for so long that I just did two new ones um, and I might be venting, but guys, I learned nine monologues in preparation for this. And so my mindset was just that I wanted to the pieces that I had learned and spent so much time, energy, effort, and money investing in that they would be seen. And so I wanted them to be seen because I was proud of them and I was excited for them. Um, and my new piece that I chose was Lynn Nottage. So I was like, yeah, I want them to see how I perform their playwrights work. Um, but I should have just done Jasmine by pipeline which they loved um so we'll see if that affects me in the long run but I'm gonna tell you now <laughs> you will need an old piece and a new piece so come prepared and come ready to play so 10 things that I want to debunk 10 12 10 11 12 some things that I want to debunk some myths surrounding callback weekend Number one, I've heard a lot that they don't really look at the self-tapes and it's not worth sitting in a self-tape because, you know, they didn't do in-person auditions in New York. They did self-tapes. So um, that's a myth. I met people there that did get there via self-tape. So if you can't make it in person, you don't want to travel to Chicago or San Francisco and all you can do is a self-tape, submit the self-tape because they do watch them. So send your best self-tape. Um it's also cost efficient. So don't believe the myth, y'all. They look at them. Number two, I've heard people say, don't do self-tapes and walk in, which I mean, that kind of makes sense because then they might think you're two different people and you also have two chances, which might be a little bit unfair. But I do know someone that was at my callback weekend that did a self-tape. And they did a walk-in. So if you submit a self-tape and you feel like you don't like it and you want to do a walk-in, hey, why not? She made it. She said that one letter was a rejection. So she received a rejection letter. And then a couple weeks later, she got a acceptance letter. And so she emailed them to be sure, like, hey, y'all y'all mean me, right? And they were like, yes, we want you to come to Callback Weekend. So, hey, if you change your mind and you want to do both or I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just giving you the information. You could choose what to do with it. Number three, there is no callback funding. If you need somewhere to stay, if you need a travel stipend for your living, your housing, your travel, they don't have it. The chair of the acting program told me to reach out to other students and ask them if I can stay with them. When I was speaking to a student, she did confirm that students open their home for prospective students to come and stay with them. But it being New York, that's not that much of a possibility because half of their homes are the size of a shoebox, respectfully. So that is always an option, but they do not give funding like some of the other major schools. Just keep that in mind. Um, if you plan on going to callback, start to save up because I think I had about a month notice after San Francisco to get ready to fly out and stay somewhere twice as expensive. So just keep that in mind. Number four, come with questions. 
It's an interview. It's called an interview, but they might not have questions for you. So come with questions for them so that you can have an opportunity to show your personality, talk to them and get into conversation. Okay. That's advice I wish I had. Myth number five, debunked. It is not on campus. It is a graduate program. So a lot of the different programs are not on the main campus. They're surrounding the campus on buildings. And you can kind of see in my vlog, just like it's a whole kind of city around running side in Harlem where the campus lies. Well, Nash Studios is about 25 minutes north of the campus. So with that being said, it's not necessarily in the best neighborhood or in the best environment, but all you need are the teachers, the walls, and your cohort, and you can be the best actor in the world, okay? So don't worry too much about where it is, but I do want you to know that it is not on that beautiful campus that everyone sees, okay? Say la vie, such is life. Number seven. Now, I know that at a lot of auditions, people won't be in the best spirits. Not everyone is so kind and so nice. Well, Columbia was a different experience. Everyone there was very kind and very nice. There were some people that were just in their zone. They came in, they performed, they left. Um, but the majority of us did, you know, kind of come together, eat lunch together, talk with each other, share experiences, share stories. And it was really, really nice. Like I mentioned, everyone's from everywhere and it was just beautiful. So if you're one of those people that want to kind of be in your own bubble, I get it. I totally understand it. But if you're not, take advantage of the opportunity to talk to people and learn and grow and experience. And just, it was amazing. I honestly loved it, especially the students because they were older than me. Um, I'm only 26, but the average student is about 29, 30. So it was really cool to learn from them. The next myth is that if you don't get a call back immediately or if you're waitlisted, you won't get into the school. Let's debunk that. I was talking to a few students that said that they literally had a student ID for a different school because Columbia took so long to call them that they just dropped the other school and chose Columbia University. Someone said that it took more than 30 days. I had some people say that they were accepted in two days and some people more than 30 days. So everyone's process is different. You don't really know what they're looking for. And maybe you're not one of the first choices. Hey, I don't know if I was one of the first choices. I'm still waiting for my call. <laughs> but, you know, it's it can still happen. Don't just give up on it. Keep the faith alive. And if you are waitlisted, send them an email say hey i'm so interested and just reapply so yeah guys it is a rolling process it doesn't all happen at once i know i know surprise surprise next up if anyone has ever told you that you need to spend thousands of dollars in training to get into grad school it's a lie y'all it's a lie there were people in that room with me that had never had any training that were straight out of undergrad there are many people in that room that they didn't have training this time around. They just went with their natural talent. And so that can get you inside of those rooms. But definitely take the time to learn. I highly would recommend reading Audition by Michael Shirtleff. I, I will preach about this book. Everything that I learned from thousands of dollars worth of training, I honestly could have read this one eleven ninety five dollars book and been good. And specifically, if you're trying to get into Columbia, I don't know if you know, but James Gallery just dropped a book called Acting Professionally, which is a guide like two, three days ago, y'all run to it. Don't walk. If you're trying to get into the school, who better to learn from than the very chair of the acting department? I mean, and let's put some money in his pockets while you at it. Cause hello, why not? The next myth that I want to debunk is I've seen so much on the internet about whether or not Columbia is a top school or a good school. All I can say is that from what I've learned over this process, Columbia is First of all, the number one school for me. Second of all, it is increasingly becoming one of the top schools every single day that passes. If you saw Divine accept her Oscar and shout out Ron Van Lu. Ron Van Lu, I thank you. When I was the only black girl in that class, when you saw me and you told me I was enough. And when I told you I don't see myself, you said, that's fine. We're going to forge our own path. Yeah, he teaches at Columbia. Um, if you want to know who is casting all of the Broadway shows, yeah, his name is James Callery and he's the chair of Columbia. Yeah, so 
where I'm going with this, the ultimate trend of this is that all of the faculty at Columbia are working actors. They're working professionals in the industry. They know what they're talking about. They have years of experience and they've actually taught and coached probably your favorite actors. So I think a lot of the time people get caught up in these big names, Yale, Juilliard, NYU, the big three, you know what they are. And um, they forget that what makes these programs are not the walls or the institution or the name, but the teachers that are teaching. And those teachers that are teaching have moved and they've changed and they're constantly changing between those four schools, Columbia, NYU, Yale, Juilliard. But right now, they're at Columbia. And um, I think that everyone should be open minded when they are being chosen from different schools because Columbia, I'm, I, I, Honestly, I'm humbled 100% by Columbia because I think they were the only school that saw me. And when they saw me, they saw me. They saw who I am. They saw my personality. And um, honestly, even if I don't get into Columbia, I'm just grateful that I was able to work with such an amazing faculty. I mean, the way that Scott gave me adjustments stood out, stood out compared to some of the other schools that I just named, the, the way that they gave me adjustments, the way that I responded to his directing was just so natural. Um, I really can't explain it. The way that they care about their students and you can see them interacting and having relationships with their students, it's extremely organic and authentic. Um, the way that the students talk about them, like they're, they love Sita. Okay, I don't know if y'all know who that is. She was one of the very first panelists for my original audition and she was just amazing. I immediately caught on to how kind she was, how perceptive she was. She read me, okay? And so it was just amazing to see that what I saw in their faculty, the students saw in their faculty and for them to have spent years with them and still have that same initial first thought you know what I thought the very first time they still think of them so highly of them it's just it's amazing to know that there is a school where all of the teachers really love their students and are pushing for them to have the best curriculum and everything that they need to succeed so Ron Van Lu, I've heard one of the reasons why he chose to teach at Columbia right now is because he said that it's amazing when all of the teachers of a faculty can agree and they agree on changing Columbia and building Columbia up to create the next generation of phenomenal actors. Um, at this point, I'm really just venting, but I've come to love Columbia. Like as I've studied and seeing the growth in their marketing, their marketing strategies, and how their showcases are performed, and the work that James has put into creating a faculty that can really bring forth the best out of these students, um, how he's added film classes, um, how Columbia itself is one of the best collaboration programs for graduate students to work with directing and playwriting um, Lynn Nottage is a playwright there. She's one of the faculty members. Um, some of the very best directing comes from Columbia. So to be able to work with them when they're young as actors and, and to be in New York, to be in New York next to Broadway and have a literal teacher that can recommend you to Broadway shows. Like it's mind blowing that when people consider some of the highest schools, the best schools in acting right now, Sometimes Columbia is on the list and sometimes it's not. But if you ask me, it's number one. It's number one. Okay. And honestly, maybe I just think it's number one because they saw me and I think that I, I didn't have to be any specific person. There wasn't a cookie cutter version of a student or actor that they were looking for. I think they saw me and they respected me as I was. And that's a lot, y'all. I'm an acquired taste. You can see what all this, all of this spice I got in this video. There's a lot to me. So, um, I just, I, 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 I love it. One of their students put it like they take the actors that are a little rough around the edges. And I can genuinely see that, that they take people that are who they are truthfully and that use their acting to serve the world, um, and I can see that. And I'm, I'm just excited to see how this school grows um, over the next decade, to see how the actors that they're pushing out in the early 2020s, where they are in 2030. Um, because 
it's it's just it's amazing how much Colombia is growing and changing. Um but yeah y'all without going on and on and on and on and on I'm just gonna end this with if you have the opportunity to go to a callback weekend of a school that originally was not your first choice but was your second third fourth fifth sixth or seventh eighth and really study the school talk to the students ask questions research go in person and just be open-minded because you might love it you might absolutely love it i know i do and i'm waiting to put this columbia shirt on it's staring at me from over there and the last big myth buster that i have is that if you do not get into school the first time or the second time it's okay it's not the end of the world um, just like you saw me getting an opportunity to be in Vogue the very same day that I was auditioning for Columbia, opportunities are going to come if you create them. If you are putting all of your energy into getting into school, something that my coach said to me is that it will be returned to you equal or better. You will have an equal experience or you will have a better experience because you put that energy into the world. So just keep working, keep growing, keep shooting for your goals and don't give up. This is not the end for me, regardless of what happens. Um, thank you guys so much for watching my video and just stay tuned. Subscribe because I'm on a journey to make all of my dreams come true, serve the world, change the world through my acting and through what I love and continue inspiring people to do what makes them happy because that's exactly what I'm doing. It's, it's absolutely insane to do all of the things that I have done, you have done, we have done to get into grad school for months at a time without knowing 100% that you will have a solidified spot inside of a program. It's, 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 it's a borderline psychotic, but we do it because we love it. And that's inspirational to people. So it's not the end of the world. And just go freaking hard. Good luck to you. If you are trying to get into grad school and you have your callbacks good luck to you i hope that your research your studying your preparation everything pays off i hope this video was helpful i'm going to be uploading it tonight next up i'm going to be uploading my original auditions in san francisco with yale Juilliard, nye columbia and after that i'm going to be auditioning how i went through the process of this it was basically a boot camp y'all i was running on mountains running in the rain doing shakespeare from sunrise to sun up like nine hours on zoom calls performing in front of strangers i was putting in the work so if you guys want to see that, just make sure you stay tuned and subscribe. And if you want to see if I get in or not, I want to see too. <laughs> no, but for real, um, just subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye.